You can't even do housework properly anymore. So you are no longer of any use to us. I agree. It's time to fire this housekeeper, right? Great! I can finally say goodbye to this old hag. My husband and mother-in-law were shouting at me in a wheelchair, and my daughter cursed at me without any sign of care. In front of me are the three of them, looking down at me with a wry smile. Are they waiting for my reaction? If you're going to go that far, I won't show any mercy either. You will see. I will make you regret it. My name is Anna Taylor, 30 years old. I'm a freelance writer working from home and a housewife. I got married two years ago and live with my husband, daughter, and mother-in-law. My husband Jared is five years older than me. I met him three years ago through a dating app I started with a friend. Jared and I both like watching movies. We had a lot in common, and we exchanged numbers right away. He was a mature man with a smart attitude. I was attracted to him and we started dating. Six months later, he proposed to me and we decided on our marriage in no time. However, there was one problem we had to deal with in order to get married. That was the existence of Maya. Maya and I are not related. She is a child between Jared and his ex-wife, and she was already 10 years old when we got married. She is now a junior high school student. I still feel a big gap between us. I can understand why it's difficult to think of me as her mother, but still she hates me so much. Until recently, she has ignored me even when I try to talk to her. Now she makes fun of me without a doubt. Just the other day, while I was preparing dinner, Maya came home after finishing her after-school activities. I called out to her to ask her about her day, but she didn't respond. I was thinking of it as her ignoring me as usual, when she threw something at my back. I looked at what had fallen and saw that it was a bag containing Maya's gym clothes. She glared at me as I picked it up. I will use those tomorrow, so wash them quickly. I spoke to Maya with a puzzled look on my face. I'm pretty sure you had another set of gym clothes, right? Even if I wash them today, they won't be dry by tomorrow. Can you take the other set with you? Huh? Why are you telling me what to do? I said wash them. Even if I start washing it now, it won't dry by tomorrow, that's why. Shut up! I told you to do it, so shut up and do it. You are useless. If it's not ready by tomorrow morning, I will tell Dad and Grandma. Good luck with that. She ran up the stairs and went to her room. She would not take anything I said to her. I had no choice but to take her gym clothes to the laundromat. While I was putting them in the dryer, I was stuck by an indescribable feeling of emptiness. I had married Jared knowing that she would never be attached to me, but I never imagined that I would suffer so much. Maya, when are you going to treat me normally? Even if I can't be your mother, I want to at least have a normal conversation with you. Well, I guess I shouldn't rush it. I have to work harder. Someday, we will understand each other. I told myself that and Barry kept my spirits up. I was the one who decided to get married. I must not give up in the middle of the process. I spent every day with that thought in my mind. Actually, besides Maya, I have another problem. That is my mother-in-law. Like Maya, my mother-in-law also seems to be unhappy with me. She has disliked me since the beginning of our marriage. On this day, when I returned home from the laundromat, my mother-in-law was waiting for me at the entrance. Hey, Anna! Where the hell have you been? Where's the dinner? I'm sorry. The side dish is ready, so I will prepare the rest right away. Where have you been wandering around until this hour? You weren't out playing around, were you? No, I wasn't. Maya asked me to take her gym clothes to the laundromat. Well, 
Are you trying to say that it was Maya's fault? You really like to blame others, don't you? I didn't mean it that way. Just get the food ready. Jared will be home soon. Maya is probably hungry too. Yes, ma'am. I will get it ready right away. Whenever my mother-in-law doesn't like something even a little bit, she blames me. She would blame me for anything like this. When I was a newlywed, this attitude made me feel sorry for myself. Compared to before, things are a little better now. However, the damage is still done. What hurt me the most was being compared to my husband's ex-wife. Her name was Michelle, apparently. My mother-in-law compares me to his ex-wife at every opportunity and make comments as if I were inferior. Michelle could have done it better. Michelle's cooking was delicious. She was a kind and caring wife. I wish Michelle would come back, etc. According to Jared, his ex-wife's affair led to their divorce. I know that my mother-in-law loves Jared very much. But why does she praise the ex-wife who caused the divorce so much? If someone hurt her beloved son, I would not be surprised if she disliked them. However, I don't have the luxury of worrying about such things. How will I get around in this house from now on? How will I deal with my mother-in-law and Maya? I have to think about these things carefully and act accordingly every day. It is very difficult and burdensome. Even so, I was determined to do my best for the sake of my beloved husband. I did not complain to my husband about my mother-in-law or daughter-in-law. I mainly asked him how we can get along with each other. On this day, I explained a series of events and asked him before going to bed. Jared, are you listening to me? Today, I was scolded by your mother and Maya again. I'm listening, I'm listening. I always tell you not to worry about that. I've told you, just leave them alone since Maya is a teenager and my mom is just like that sometimes. That's not going to happen. We are going to live together from now on. How can we live together and get along? Jared, you should think about that a little too. Without taking his eyes off the phone, he replied in an uninterested tone, so I questioned him firmly. Please, I'm serious here. Asking for advice. I can understand they don't like me, but your mother compares me to Michelle, you know. What? Michelle? She says that Michelle was a better wife than me. She's always telling me that. You should put yourself in my shoes a little bit. I really want to have a good relationship with my mother-in-law. Well, even if you say so, I'm sure it will turn out the way it's supposed to. Time will tell. That's just nonsense. Nonsense? I'm very serious. All you have to do is make an effort to be liked by my mother and Maya. Think about it and just do your best. My husband patted me on the shoulder, said goodnight, and pulled the covers over him. I wondered if he was really asleep or if he was just pretending. No matter how much I called out to him, he never responded. The next day, while I was preparing breakfast, Maya came down from her room. I hand her the gym clothes neatly folded and bagged as she prepares for school. Here you go, Maya. This is the gym clothes you asked me for yesterday. Maya, are you listening to me? These are from yesterday. Shut up! I can hear you! I'm ignoring you on purpose, don't you understand? Ignore me? You could at least talk to me a little bit. What? You want me to say thank you or something? Huh? Maya sighed heavily and took the gym clothes from my hands. Then she said in an irritated tone, You're so annoying every time. You're acting like you're my mother. You shouldn't have married dad in the first place. Oh. Maya, that's too much. So annoying. Why do you make me so irritated from the morning? You're really making me sick. She didn't touch the breakfast I had prepared, but ate the bread my mother-in-law had bought for herself. 
Then she thanked her grandma for the food and went off to school. I went to the door to see her off, but of course, I didn't even get a reply. I had no choice. I should eat the breakfast she left. But when I went to the living room, I found that the dishes that should have been there were gone. The dishes I had made had been dumped in a sink. What is this? Why? Then I heard a small giggle from behind me. There was my mother in law with a smile on her face. No way! Did you do this? Yes, because it looked so bad. Maya didn't seem to want it, so I threw it away for her. How can you be so terrible? Why did you do this? Terrible? It's your fault that you can only cook such bad food. It's all your fault. Why? No matter what I said back, my mother in law paid back double with her words. She kept attacking me one sidedly. On top of it all off, she followed me to the grocery store. A few hours later, the worst happened to me. I was on my way home after finishing the shopping ordered by my mother in law. That was when I was involved in an accident. I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. By my right leg was left paralyzed. It became difficult for me to walk by myself. The doctor told me that I would have to live in a wheelchair for a while. Although my life was not in serious condition, I was hospitalized for a few days. The hospital must have contacted my family. Soon after, my husband, mother in law, and daughter in law came to visit me in my hospital room. I was sitting in my wheelchair and all of them were lined up in front of me. Did they come to see me because they were worried? I was delighted and thanked them. All of you are here. Thank you so much for coming. Is your leg going to heal? My husband asked anxiously. I shook my head and answered without breaking my smile. The doctor said it might be better than it is now, but that it would be difficult for it to heal completely. It will be a little while before I can walk on my own. I see. Then I guess I don't have a choice. A choice? Thank you for everything, Anna. What, Jared? My husband looks down at me and gives a nasty smile. I was puzzled, not understanding what he meant by thank you. My husband, perhaps sensing something, started talking. Well, it was a short time, but I'm glad I married you. You did the housework without complaining. You also gave us a lot of money to live on. What are you talking about? Their mood had clearly changed. The corners of their mouth are up, but I sense something frightening. It was that kind of expression. When I shrank in front of them, my husband, mother in law, and Maya in that order opened their mouths. You can't even do housework properly anymore, so you're no longer of any use to us. I agree. It's time to fire this housekeeper, right? Great. I can finally say goodbye to this old hag. My husband and mother-in-law were shouting at me in a wheelchair, and my daughter cursed at me without any sign of care. I was so shocked that my body stiffened and my legs trembled. My husband looking down at me finally gave me his final words. I married you and kept our marriage all so that you could take care of the house. In other words, you are no longer of any use to me now that you are in a wheelchair. Oh no, does that mean... Divorce is what it is. Thank you for being my housekeeper all this time. As soon as you get out of the hospital, take your stuff and get out of our house. My husband took the divorce papers out of his bag and slammed them down in front of me. His part already filled in. Without waiting for my reply, they left the hospital room. The door to the room closed and the sound of their footsteps and laughter faded away. At that moment, my heart was already filled with anger toward them. He never liked me from the beginning. He married me and used me to take care of his daughter. This is unforgivable. All three of them. I will never forgive them. I signed the divorce papers right then and there and called my mother. 
I explained the situation and asked her to submit the signed divorce papers to the city office. A few days later, I was safely discharged from the hospital and headed for my parents' house. I asked my parents to tell my in-laws that I had filed the divorce papers and to pack up my belongings. I returned straight to my parents' house. I would never see them again. I felt somewhat relieved and decided to start a new life. Five years later, a familiar name Jared appeared on my phone. I had forgotten to block his number. I did not answer the call and deleted his information from my phone. The next day, my former family showed up at my parents' house. When they saw me, they knelt down on the ground. I was puzzled and wondered what was going on when Jared suddenly looked up and started. Help us! What? What do you mean so out of the blue? Please, Anna! You are the only one I can rely on! What is this about? I need you to lend us some money. Otherwise, we can't make a living. If I sum up his words, this is what it was. For a while after I left, they were living a comfortable life. But when Maya entered a private high school, their finance had become more difficult. The reason was that Maya was stealing money from the house to buy the things she wanted. Not only that, Jared's mother was also using her son Sully to indulge in beauty treatments and luxury brand goods. When their savings ran out, they began to borrow money. They were unable to repay their debts, and they were forced into a situation where they couldn't borrow any more money. The biggest issue right now was Maya's tuition. She couldn't keep up her grades, so they apparently have to pay high fees to keep her in school. They tried for a scholarship, but her grades were so bad that she is on the verge of being expelled from school. Jared rubbed his head against the ground with tears in his eyes as he finished telling me what had happened. Please, please, it's just as I said, you must have made a lot of money. So I'm begging you, please lend us some money, even if it's just a little. His mother and Maya followed as they begged together. I was deeply disgusted by them. Five years ago, they kicked me out of the house after bullying me every day. Then they come back like nothing had happened, when they are in need of money. I knew that I was still being used for their convenience. I was even getting angry. The next thing I knew, I had turned on the faucet at the front door and was spraying water at them. What the hell are you doing, you bitch? Again, all three of them screaming and yelling. Hey, what are you doing? It's so cold. Don't get carried away, you old hag. We are relying on you and begging you to help us. This is obviously not the way to ask for help. Once their true nature was exposed, I blotted out my true feelings, which I had been keeping in my heart all this time. Relying on me? I never ask you to rely on me. You used me for your own convenience and now you want me to help you out because you're in trouble? That's bullshit. How much more do you have to mock me? What? What the hell? How dare you talk to me like that? We are in so much trouble. I don't care. I don't care how much trouble you guys are in or whether you are starving to death. I don't give a shit. Rather, I'm glad you're in trouble. This is what you deserve. I will never help you in a million years. Why don't you guys just lick each other's wound and suffer for the rest of your lives? After I finished spraying water on them, I slammed the door as hard as I could. I locked the front door and physically cut them off. For a while after that, there was yapping and screaming in front of the house. A neighbor who couldn't stand to see them called the police. They were taken away by the police under the name of nuisance. The rumor that they got into trouble with the police spread throughout the neighborhood. Eventually, the story reached Jared's company. Unable to bear the side-eyeing from his colleagues, he resigned voluntarily. As a result, they were unable to pay Maya's school fees and she was forced to drop out of high school. 
Now each of the three is working to pay off their debts. They seem to be cooperating with each other. But when they meet each other, they are always blaming each other for their problems. The family relationship is deteriorating day by day. From my point of view, this is all I can hope for. I can only say that they deserved it. I, on the other hand, am still working at home while being taken care of by my parents. My leg has become much more mobile, and I'm now going to rehabilitation to make a full recovery. I cannot thank my parents enough for accepting me back after my divorce. From now on, I'm going to enjoy life to the fullest for my father, mother, and myself. On the day of the long-awaited honeymoon, my husband, Matthew, says, I'd rather go with my mommy than you. He left me behind and went on our honeymoon trip with his mother, Lucy, my mother-in-law. Why on earth did my husband want to go to the honeymoon trip with his own mother? My husband's true identity was revealed. My name is Sophia Simpson. I am a high school teacher. I have lived my life solely through my work until now, and it was rewarding to watch my students grow and going on with their own paths. However, since I was so proud of my work that I have not been able to get married yet. Recently, I celebrated my 38th birthday and began to feel desperate to get married. <sighs> my work is very fulfilling, but I'm very worried about living alone for the rest of my life. All of my friends around me are blessed with families and led fulfilling lives with their kind husbands and children. At the high school where I work, there are students who are maturing from children to adults and they are spending their time in a lively atmosphere. Seeing the happiness of the people around me, my admiration to get married and start a family increased day by day. I have never had an active love life. I wasn't really interested in it, and I enjoyed working more. Now is the time to be brave. Wanting for getting married and starting a family, I made up my mind and decided to attend a matching party to meet my future partner. Then, there I met Matthew, who later became my husband. Matthew is 36 years old, and he was closer to my age. Although Matthew only worked as temporary worker and had very less income, I got very attracted to his honest and calm personality. Would you be willing to go out with me with a marriage in the near future? Yes, I would. I look forward to going on dates with you. Although it had only been such a short time since we've just met, I felt that he was the one for me. So then, I started going out with Matthew with marriage in mind. On our dates, Matthew was always kind and was very attentive to me. He always planned our dates, and every time we go on our dates, he checks on me by saying, I hope you are not tired yet. As he checks on me, he would casually carry my bags for me, which makes me feel very much cared for. I was really happy when he made a surprise reservation for me at a restaurant that serves delicious sweets that I like. I think Matthew is the nicest man I have ever met. However, as I went on more and more dates with Matthew, there were times when I felt a little uncomfortable with him. During our dates, he would often talk about his mother saying, My mom is. Almost all of the time, he would say, I'm just trying to reassure my mom. And then, he would call his mom to check in on her, which caught my attention. I can understand if it's a little boy doing such thing, but I wonder if it's something an adult man would do. I couldn't tell it to Matthew, but every time when he says the word mom, even though I was enjoying our dates, for that moment, I became disappointed. Furthermore, I felt a little disappointed that he would always end each day early saying, oh, I don't want my mom to worry. He would end our day early by saying that. Matthew is a nice man, but I think he is too caring about his mother and I wonder if he's the one for me. Sometimes those kind of thoughts crosses my mind and I become worried. But. I decided to see the good side of this situation, thinking, Matthew is a kind man who knows how to take care of people. 
Matthew is always kind to me and takes good care of me. I began to think that the word mom during our dates was an expression of his kindness and protection, and I began to feel attracted to him for saying the word mom. Then, six months after we started dating, Will you marry me? Yes, of course. I'm looking forward to live with you for the rest of my life. Matthew proposed to me, and we decided to get married. After our engagement, I visited my mother in law, Lucy, for the first time to greet her. I wondered what kind of woman Lucy was every time he talked about his mom on our dates. Lucy said, Welcome to my home, Sophia. I'm glad you're finally here. She welcomed me warmly with a smile. After talking to her, I found her to be a very kind and gentle person. When I actually met Lucy, I was able to understand why Matthew talked a lot about her. Shortly after greeting Lucy, Matthew and I officiated our marriage certificate. At this point, I asked Matthew a question I had been wanting to ask him for a long time. Matthew, do you want to have a wedding ceremony? Matthew looked hesitant for a moment, but then said, If you want to have the wedding ceremony, yeah, sure. But to tell you the truth, I feel like there's no need to have the wedding ceremony. Why not? Isn't it so hard to prepare for a wedding ceremony? Even on the wedding day, I have to worry and care about my friends and acquaintances, and I don't think I have the capacity to do so. Instead of having a wedding ceremony, I'd rather spend my time with only you going on trips and doing fun things, just the two of us. I totally agreed with Matthew's idea. Besides, at my age, I was a little reluctant to walk in front of my friends in a wedding dress now. I told Matthew an idea I have been thinking about for a while. I honestly don't think we need to have a wedding either. I was thinking, why don't we not have a wedding ceremony, but instead, let's have a grand honeymoon? We'll go to places we've never been and make some great memories just for the two of us. How do you feel about that idea? Matthew perked up and said, That's such a great idea. Let's make it the best honeymoon ever. He said in such a happy voice and agreed to my idea. From then on, Matthew and I started to prepare for our grand honeymoon. We decided to share the travel expenses between us, but since my income was greater than Matthew's, I paid more than him. I'm sorry for putting the burden on you to pay more than me. I don't mean to say this as an alternative, but can you leave it to me to arrange the travel destination and prepare your luggage? Are you sure about this? Since it is both our honeymoon, shouldn't the two of us discuss and prepare for it together? Matthew looked troubled and said, I feel so bad that you paid so much for me. I just wanted a chance to make up for it. Besides, it's our honeymoon and I wanted to have a surprise for you. I didn't think that Matthew was drawn aback about the travel expenses. I was a little resistant of Matthew's idea because I wanted the two of us to discuss things together and get ready for our honeymoon. However, I thought by leaving everything to Matthew makes him feel less intimidated about this honeymoon trip, then I'll count on him to do all of the arrangements and the preparation of the luggages. Besides, what is the surprise he's going to prepare for me? I got excited about it, and it seemed like the best idea to leave all the preparations to Matthew. Fine, then can you do the preparations for me? I'm really looking forward to the surprise. With a big smile on my face, I agreed to Matthew's idea. And on the day of the honeymoon, I was very impatient. I didn't see any of my luggages for the grand honeymoon. Matthew said, I'll pack your luggages for the trip. I know you had a hard day at work, so you just get some rest for your trip. I took advantage of his kind words and rested early yesterday. What did Matthew do with my luggages? I wonder if he has prepared it properly. I ask Matthew, who has just woken up and is looking sleepy. Good morning, Matthew. Thank you for all your preparations until today. 
By the way, where are my luggages for the trip? I can't find them. Matthew looked a little annoyed, but as if he had come to his senses, he took a deep breath <sighs> and began to speak. Actually, I didn't prepare any luggages for you. Since I didn't understand what he was saying, I looked at him with a blank stare. Wait, what do you mean by you didn't prepare my luggages? Our honeymoon is today, remember? You are not going to the honeymoon, Sophia. I want you to stay home for the rest of the day. Matthew, I don't understand what you're saying. Are you saying that our honeymoon dates have changed? If that's the case, I wish you would have told me about it in advance. No, that's not what I mean. I've decided to go on my honeymoon with my mommy. I was taken aback. I have heard Matthew talk about his mom many times before, but I've never heard him call his mom mommy before. How could a man in his late thirties call his own mother mommy? And did Matthew just say he was going on his honeymoon with his mommy? There were just too many things I couldn't understand. As my brain was scrambling for words, I said to Matthew, What are you saying? Well, when I started planning and preparing for our honeymoon, and I started thinking that this trip would be more fun with my mommy than going to the trip with you. You said it yourself. Let's make the best memory on our grand honeymoon with just the two of us. Are you saying it was all a lie? That's not what I meant. At first, I wanted to make great memories on the honeymoon with just the two of us. But as I planned the trip, I started to realize that going on this honeymoon with my mommy would make it more better. I still don't understand what you are saying. Do you have any idea how much nonsense you're saying? I've always felt a little uncomfortable before with you whenever you were talking about your mother. And now, you call your mother mommy. Don't you think that that's a strange thing for a man in his late 30s to call his mother mommy? I finally exploded on the fact that I felt strange about Matthew's love towards his mommy. Matthew perhaps didn't want that to be pointed out, but finally got pointed out by me. And suddenly, he changed his attitude towards me. Shut up! Stop saying such thing. Of course, I'd rather go on my honeymoon with my mommy than you. Matthew yelled at me angrily with his face all red, a face he had never shown to me before. I want to take mommy on this trip rather than you. Why can't you understand this feeling? I was very confused by Matthew's behavior and me not being able to go to the honeymoon, which I have been very much looking forward to. I wanted to say something back, but my mind went blank and there were no words coming out of my mouth. Matthew saw me standing there in a daze, which he interpreted as me agreeing to the idea of Matthew and Lucy going on our honeymoon. Since Matthew thought I agreed to his idea, his face became gentle again. Thank you for understanding. I'll do my best to have fun with my mommy on the honeymoon. As he said this, he packed up his luggages to get ready to leave the house. I don't want to keep mommy waiting, so I'd better get going. Don't worry, I'll be back with lots of souvenirs, so please look forward for them. I really wanted to stop him by saying, Don't go! But at the same time, I didn't want to see his face right now and I didn't feel like talking to him. Besides, right now, all I could think was how to revenge him for what he has done. I just said, fine, and saw him leave our house. As soon as Matthew left the house, I called Lucy. Lucy answered the phone right away with a kind and warm voice like always. Lucy, there is actually something I wanted to tell you. What a great timing to call because I wanted to talk and say thank you to you. What are you talking about? Sophia, you gave me today's trip as a gift, didn't you? I know you're newlyweds and want to enjoy your time as a couple. So, thank you for even caring about me at a time like this. I didn't understand what she was saying, so I was a little confused. There seems to be a misunderstanding going on between me and Lucy. 
I bet Matthew did not tell how the trip was gifted to Lucy. Lucy's voice sounded very excited and even over the phone I could tell how happy she was. I was uncomfortable at the thought to tell her the truth, but I had no other choice but to tell her the truth. I braced myself and told her the truth. Lucy, did you ever ask Matthew how he came up with the idea of going on to this trip? From Matthew, I heard that even though you two are just newlyweds, you wanted me and Matthew to go on a trip, just the two of us, to show gratitude. I knew it. I found out that Matthew had been twisting the truth and telling Lucy lies for his own convenience. Matthew's cowardly tactics made me feel more and more angry. However, Lucy, who is not told of the truth, is also the victim. I decided to calmly continue the conversation before Matthew arrived at Lucy's house. Actually, this trip between Matthew and you was not originally for a mother-son trip. What are you saying, Sophia? Actually, Matthew and I were supposed to go on our honeymoon today. Instead of having a wedding ceremony, we decided to go on a grand honeymoon to create the best memories just the two of us. Since I covered most of the travel expenses, Matthew took the charge to make the arrangements and preparations for the trip. Lucy perhaps sensed a bad premonition. Her mood changed from excitement to a serious mood and heard me out. Until today, this morning, I was very much looking forward to our grand honeymoon. But then today, Matthew told me that he would rather go on a trip with you than me. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Lucy sounded very shocked over the phone. I honestly couldn't understand why Matthew would want to go on this honeymoon with you. However, I couldn't stop him from leaving our house. Lucy, that's why I need your help. Lucy sounded like she was thinking through over the phone. Matthew is just a kind person who thinks the best for his mother. However, that excessive kindness towards his mother encouraged him to do a foolish thing, betray his newly wedded wife. Lucy is an intelligent person and she understands what's right and wrong. After a moment, Lucy opened her mouth. I'm so sorry for Matthew giving you such a hard time. I have a great idea. Lucy and I started to discuss ways to punish Matthew. It seemed that Matthew arrived at Lucy's house shortly after our punishment plan was finalized. I hung up the phone and started preparing my revenge on Matthew. And so begins the honeymoon that Matthew and I will never forget for the rest of our lives. The honeymoon begins with an unexpected event for Matthew. When Matthew went to pick Lucy up at home, Lucy suddenly told him, I'm not feeling well. Mommy, are you alright? Forget the trip, let's go to the hospital. Matthew says anxiously to Lucy, who responds without a care. When you are around me, since you annoy me, I feel a lot worse. Stay outside until I tell you to come back. Matthew was upset and concerned at the cold response from his mother, who was normally gentle, but he did as she asked and waited outside for her to recover. Lucy was able to keep Matthew waiting outside the house. This is part of our punishment plan. Then, Lucy called her husband, Sean, Matthew's older brother, George, and my parents, Ron and Chelsea. A few hours later, Lucy told Matthew, I'm feeling much better. Let's go on this trip. Even though the schedule of the trip was way behind, Matthew was still excited and was happy just because he was able to go to this trip with his favorite mommy. Matthew had no idea what was going to happen to him. Matthew was shocked when he arrived at the destination. That is no surprise. It was supposed to be just Lucy and him being on the trip, but as soon as they landed, he saw Sean, George, Ron, Chelsea, and I, who he didn't invite, awaiting for him. What the hell is this? Why are you guys here? I invited them, Matthew. Matthew looked shocked. But why? We talked about enjoying the trip, just the two of us. Sophia told me everything before you came to pick me up. Matthew glared sharply at me. Why did you have to tell her? I told her a story so she didn't have to worry about it. 
I even made the story sound like it was a trip you suggested, so that you will be liked by mommy, you know. I was taken aback by Matthew's incomprehensible statement. You are the one who lied to everyone. Don't you understand? Shut up. This is not the honeymoon I planned. Matthew looked extremely annoyed that we had ruined the travel plan he had envisioned for him and Lucy. Does he not feel sorry for me? Then Lucy said, That's enough! She scolded Matthew. If I go on the trip with you, then it won't be a honeymoon from the first place! Matthew seemed quite upset and shocked by Lucy's scoldings. His angry expression from earlier changed and he now looks as if he is about to cry. Did you think I would be happy with you doing this to me? You just got married to her and already you're making your wife sad. I thought you were a kind and sincere person. I was very proud of you, don't you understand? And yet, I can't believe you lied to your wife and me to organize a trip like this. Following Lucy's comments, Sean, George, and Ron started to speak to Matthew. You are pathetic. Don't you make your wife sad when she happily married you? You have always been blind when it comes to your mother, but this is way out of hand, Matthew. This is an opportunity for you to reevaluate your unusual obsession with mother. I thought you were a very sincere, kind, and nice young man, but doing such thing like this? I can't trust my precious daughter to a man like you. Maybe you should rethink about your marriage. Matthew was getting smaller and smaller as the other family members kept attacking him. No one here was in the mood to enjoy the trip anymore. Although Matthew had thoroughly planned and prepared for this honeymoon, the trip was cancelled and we all had to return. I decided to return to my parents' house because I wanted to have my own time away from Matthew. The next day, Matthew and Lucy came to visit me at my parents' place. I am so sorry. It was a very stupid thing I did when I looked back on it. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for it. I hope you can forgive me. Matthew gets down on his knees and apologizes, begging for forgiveness. I couldn't respond right away because I was afraid that Matthew might betray me again. Seeing my reaction, Lucy started to speak gently. I am apologizing to you on his behalf also. I am so sorry for the terrible things my son has done to you, Sophia. I will make sure that all of your travel expenses will be repaid by Matthew. I understand how you feel that you can no longer trust Matthew. I have spoiled him so much that he has never been able to leave me. I will stop contacting Matthew frequently and keep a healthy distance from him. This, I promise. Oh no! Keeping a distance? That's too much, Mom! Matthew gave Lucy his pleading look. Haven't you learned your lesson yet? That's enough! If you have time for me, take care of the woman who married you instead. Matthew was very sad and started to cry as Lucy, whom he loved, took her distance from him. I still felt a little guilty for making Matthew cry, but Lucy helped me get the revenge I wanted, and she was very faithful to me. For Lucy, I decided to believe in Matthew just one more time and move on forward together as husband and wife. Today, my husband is doing the household chores and devoting himself to me, taking Lucy's advice, take good care of the woman who came to be your wife. Although we had some problems right after we got married, we are very happily married now.